Welcome to Electronline. Now we're going to take a look at the concept of convolution in a graphical sense. And then in the next video, we're actually going to work it out using some integrals. But right now, let's think about convolution in a graphical sense. Let's say we have two functions, f of t and g of t. And we're trying to find the convolution of f of t and g of t, written like this. Now remember that the convolution of f of t and g of t is exactly the same as the convolution of g of t times f of t. Now, we're not going to show why that is so in this case, but later on we're going to use that concept as well. But notice that f of t is equal to 3 between the values of 2 and 3, and g of t is equal to 2 in the values between 0 and 1. The way to find the convolution is to take one of the two functions, and in this case we're going to take the second function g of t, and on step one we're going to fold what we call g of t. We're going to find the mirror image about the vertical axis. We're simply going to flip over the function. That's what we did here. We flipped it over, and so now it's g of minus t. But in order not to confuse the concept of t, because since we folded it, we're going to use a dummy variable tau. So when we fold g of t, we end up with g of negative tau. Next, we're going to begin to slide g of t across. In other words, we're going to convert the function to g of t minus tau in such a way that the front end in this case is t and the back end of this is t minus 1 since the width of that is only equal to 1, right? Since the width was equal to 1, the front end is going to be t and the back end is going to be t minus 1. And t, of course, is a constant value that's going to change value as you slide this across. Now, as you begin to slide the folded g of t across, you can see that eventually this will then reach the other function, begin to overlap the other function, completely overlap the other function, and then continue to move until it's completely past, oh, there it is, the last drawing, until it's completely past the other function, f of t. The convolution of f of t and g of t is simply the product of the two values of the two function multiplied times the amount of the overlap. So in this case, with other words, what we mean, it's going to be the height of the first function and the height of the second function, that's 2 times 3, which is 6, multiplied times the amount of the overlap, which in this case would be t minus 2. Now you can see until the front function, or I should say until this function right here, the g that's being folded over as you slide it, until t becomes equal to 2, there's no overlap at all. And so since you have to multiply 2 times 3 times the overlap, if there's no overlap, you get zero result. Which means the function, so here we have the convolution f of t and g of t is equal to, so from the values of 0 smaller than t smaller than 2, the value is equal to 0. The convolution of the two must be equal to 0 because there's no overlap at all. Not until t reaches 2. And then from 2 to 3, the overlap increases until you reach the maximum overlap. So from 2 to 3, you're going to get an increasing value. So here we're going to graph the convolution. So when you get from 0 to 2, from 0 to 2, the convolution is 0. But what happens from 2 to 3? Well, we know that the convolution from 2 less than t less than 3, when t goes from 2 to 3, it's going to be the value of 2 times the value of 3 times the amount of the overlap. And the overlap is going to be t minus 2. It's going to be the width of this overlap, so it's going to be t minus 2, which means that this is going to be equal to 6t minus 12. Notice that this is a linear function of t. When t is equal to 2, the value is 12 minus 12 is 0. And when, the, when t is equal to 3, it will be 18 minus 12, which is 6. In other words, the convolution of f and g, when you go from 2 to 3, it starts at 0. And by the time you get to 3, the value is equal to 6. And it's a linear function, so it's this function right here. Let me try to draw a straight line. There we go. So that is the convolution of f and g when you slide the folded g from 2 to 3, it goes from 0 to 6. Now you have complete overlap. So 
the convolution here would be 2 times 3 times the overlap of 1. 2 times 3 is 6 times 1 is 6. And so that's what you get. Now what happens when you continue sliding from 3 to 4? Well, when t falls between 3 and 4, what's going to happen is the convolution is going to be the product, the height of, of the one function times the height of the second function times the overlap. And the overlap is going to be from 3 minus t minus 1. So the overlap is going to be 3 minus t minus 1. We can simplify that by multiplying this out. So this would be equal to 6 times 3 minus a minus 1 is 4. So this becomes 4 minus t. In other words, this would be 24 minus 6t. Notice when t is equal to 3, 24 minus 6 times 3 is, that's 18. 24 minus 18 is 6. So sure enough, when t is equal to 3, the convolution is 6. Now, when t is equal to 4, 6 times 4 is 24, 24 minus 24 is 0, so the function decreases again by the time t reaches 4. It's like this. And so this here would be the, va the variable t, and this would be the convolution of f of t and g of t. And that's what the convolution looks like. It's simply the product of the height of the one function times the product of the height of the second function times the amount of overlap of the two functions. And if it's somewhere in between, of course, when, for example, t is equal to 3 and a half, that would be 24 minus 6 times 3 and a half, which would be 21, that would be equal to 3. So by the time you get to 3 and a half, the height would be 3, and so forth. So you can see that this is a graphical representation of the convolution of these two particular functions. Now, of course, that will change for every two sets of functions, but here's a very nice example of a graphical representation of the convolution of two functions. So you take one of your functions, you fold it over, so this becomes, instead of g of t, it becomes g of negative t, so that we don't get confused, we use the dummy variable tau. Then we convert it to g of t minus tau, so that allows us to slide it as t changes value. Of course, then we can go ahead and slide it across. As it slides across, the convolution is simply the product of the height of the first function times the height of the second function times the amount of the overlap. The amount of overlap can be defined. Notice that this one, the front end is t, the back end is t minus 1 because it's a width of 1. This one is always stationary between 2 and 3. So here you can see 2 times 3 times overlap, which is the front end, t, the back end would be 2. And it's overlapped like this. The width would be from 3 to 2, and when it's like this, it would be from 3 to t minus 1. And then you can define what the convolution is equal to for the various values of t. From 0 to 2, the convolution is 0. From 2 to 3, the convolution is 6t minus 12. From 3 to 4, the convolution is 24 minus 60. And, of course, when you go beyond 4, for t greater than 4, the convolution is 0 again, because then there will not be any overlap. And this hopefully gives you a very good feel, at least graphically, what the convolution is and how it can be calculated. And in the next video, we're actually going to use the integral notation to calculate the same results. And you can see the connection between the way we defined it here and the way we defined it a few videos ago. I think it was video 44, if I'm not mistaken. And you can compare the two and see that, yes, both definitions give you the exact same value. And that's how it's done.